Right, so Genocide Joe Biden. I'd imagine he's aware of that nickname by now, but it appears he's only just clicked as to why people are calling him it, and Israel's move into Rafa and seizing control of the border crossing in violation of the Camp David Accords is one more move by the Netanyahu administration to derail ceasefire talks. A ceasefire he himself has already ruled out, despite Hamas having accepted the deal on the table. It is now obvious and impossible to deny that the problem is Netanyahu now. Even the most ardent of supporters can't evade what is abundantly clear. Or if they choose to deny it still, that is very much on them, and worse if they defend it. If committing genocide against tens of thousands of Gazans, with the potential for that number to skyrocket as attacks on Rafa increase with greater ferocity, then they deserve to go down with him, and that is a fate that has to be looking more and more likely, given that even Joe Biden, Israel's staunchest global supporter and arms supplier, has just done something that appears to be a sign of rowing back on that. Though any thoughts of self-preservation he might have, given what he is allowed to go on for seven months already, the one man who could stop it all, well, is it enough now, and or is it all too late? Right, so Biden is in a panic over the Israeli invasion of Gaza, the ongoing genocide. But obviously this doesn't concern the number of people that have been killed. If that bothered him so much, he would have stepped in before Gaza had been virtually completely razed to the ground north to south. What is making him panic is the fact that he and his administration have no control whatsoever over Netanyahu anymore. And as a result of that, don't control their colonialist project. Their stake in the Middle East, as they have been accustomed to in the past, and that is in no small part due to the fact that when it comes down to it, and especially in light of the fact the US under Biden have sought to avoid ever placing sanctions of any kind on Israel, instead of offering only unabashed, unavowed support at all times, even though it's been obvious to the world that Israel is engaging in genocide, Netanyahu is more concerned about losing his grip on power than falling out of favour with the US. And as such, is clearly putting the hard right elements of his crackpot coalition front and centre. Should the government fall, Netanyahu knows his number will be up, with all the fallout of his actions that would be, we would hope, soon to follow. So keeping himself in power is all that matters to him, and keeping America happy, well, that doesn't therefore end up being the top priority anymore. Equally, Joe Biden and his administration are in an election year this year now, only a few months to go, and as inconceivable as it might seem to we on the outside of that, Israel is giving Biden a re-election headache. And there's every chance the return of Donald Trump can't therefore be ruled out. That moniker of genocide Joe won't just follow Biden through his election campaigning. He deserves nothing less than to be stuck with the title for life. So let's not kid ourselves that the loss of Palestinian lives has any bearing on Biden ending up in a bit of a flap and a bit of a panic now. He's not given it anything like the focus it should have done. But what will focus his mind is the problems he has made for himself. So what's he going to do? How to get things back where he'd like them to be? How can he get some positive press, start to show that he is listening to people's concerns now? The voices from those college campuses, from demonstrations elsewhere, from the international world stage. But more importantly, how can he do this whilst doing the bare minimum to upset Israel? Because that is his ever-present focus as well. Well, he's paused an arms shipment. I know, big deal, right? In light of what has been going on in Rafa over the last several weeks, aggression from Israel towards the people trapped there, some 1.6 million of them, having ramped up and with Israel now having violated peace accords with Egypt by taking control of the Palestinian side of the Rafa border crossing, it is all looking very, very bleak right now. Seemingly nothing can stop Netanyahu from doing what he feels he must to keep control on power. No amount of loss of Palestinian innocent life, seemingly too many for as long as he gets what he wants. He gets to remain Prime Minister. He's delaying the inevitable, I fancy, though, given the demonstrations in Tel Aviv and elsewhere in Israel demanding his resignation. Re-election seems very far-fetched now for him. But who knows what else he might be prepared to do going forward. At any rate, with a ceasefire deal agreed with Hamas, it will have come as no surprise to those of us observing and being fully aware of Netanyahu's motivations that he would never agree to stick by it himself. Not if it meant not going into Rafa, because destroying Hamas is now so intertwined with his grip on power, to do anything less would bring his government down, and therefore is unthinkable. And so, Joe Biden, with this having dawned on him at last, and his team, has held up a shipment of £2,000 bombs due to be deployed to Israel, citing Rafa as their reason for doing so. With the Rafa border crossing now under Israeli control, no aid is getting in at all to the people of Gaza. The attacks on Rafa continue, and Israel naturally assumed, 
Understandable, all things considered, as to what we've observed since October 7th, that the aid from the US would just carry on no matter what they did. That Biden would gripe and wince and complain and grumble, but ultimately he would just keep supplying the regime. It is what the US have always done. It's what they've been doing for seven months now. It's what they've been doing ever since Israel was created. Again, making it obvious, if it wasn't before, that Israel is a Western-backed project and remains so. That they basically consider too big to be allowed to fail. And that is why in no small part has U.S. public money kept it afloat for all these years to the tune of some hun of hundreds of billions of dollars, nearly $300 billion, I believe, over the last 75 years that Israel has been in existence. That has now been officially threatened, albeit a very, very tiny bit. Without U.S. armaments, and we've always known this, Israel will very quickly run out of munitions, going through them like they do, like a dose of salts, with more always on the way. So to... Halt a delivery? Make a late delivery? Well, that will definitely make Israel look up, won't it? But if Biden thought this might make Israel think twice, he really hasn't got the measure of just how depraved and batshit the Zionist regime is these days. Here's an excerpt detailing matters. On Wednesday, Lloyd Austin, the US Defense Secretary, confirmed reports that a shipment of 2,000 pound bombs had been halted in the context of unfolding events in Rafa. Other weapons packages to Israel were also under review, said Matthew Miller, the State Department spokesman. Mr. Biden's administration hopes this decision to pause the munitions shipment will force Israel to reconsider its planned ground invasion of Rafah in the south of Gaza. But Israeli officials reacted furiously to the decision, questioning the US's repeated claim to have an ironclad commitment to the country's security. Mr. Erdan told Israel's Channel 12 News that Mr. Biden can't say he is our partner in the goal to destroy Hamas, whilst on the other hand delay the means meant to destroy Hamas. It comes after Mr. Biden cautioned Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, against the Rafah invasion in a phone call on Monday. So Israel are bitching about it, still claiming it is all about Hamas. But with the scale of innocent lives lost and the potential catastrophic loss of life, that would be so much worse if scenes repeated elsewhere in Gaza were meted out in Rafa. This is typical par for the course dishonesty, a measure of how deranged they are, given that instead of listening, they are, as usual, playing the victim cards and spitting their dummies out. Did you notice there was no mention of hostages in any of that? Equally, and perhaps sadly predictably, if Biden thought this might buy him a bit of good press and support for, let's face it, doing as little as possible to hold Israel accountable, in the hope it will still be enough to give him a bit of a, an election boost to take the heat off him, himself politically back home, it's blown up in his face amongst other politicians in the US as well, both on his side and amongst Republicans. So well done, Joe. Biden is hardly the only pro-Israel nut job in US political discourse. There are plenty of others, and they are squealing almost as loudly as Israel are about holding up this shipment. And of course, purely political reasons, a lot of these politicians would have been involved in stymieing aid packages to Israel, financial ones over the last several months as well. So hypocrisy is definitely writ large here. Now, I suppose it is what happens amongst public opinion, voter opinion right now. That actually matters most. The US have a presidential system after all. It isn't other politicians Biden necessarily has to worry about the most here. In his favour is the fact he's running against Donald Trump, the worst US president in living memory. There's not a lot of argument against that. But Biden's actions aren't exactly raising the bar a great deal, with this mess in Israel and Gaza easily overshadowing anything else he's ever been involved in. And I very much doubt right-thinking Americans, those with a soul, a social conscience, anyone, frankly, who actually puts equal value on all human life, will forgive or forget what Biden has unquestioningly gone along with. And despite splits each time this support has come up for debate, far more often than not, these aid packages, whatever they are, military or otherwise, get voted through. And let's also not forget that Biden has subverted Congress several times to get aid through even without votes. All of a sudden, it seems to have dawned on Joe Biden that he, he might have gone too far after all this. All of a sudden, his own position is under threat. Little wonder a report on Israel's wartime conduct has now been indefinitely delayed as well, because if that got out and Americans will readily realise they've been paying for this, well, that'll definitely be vote-losing stuff of that, I'm absolutely certain. Let's... Let's just shelve that, classify it to death for a while and hope every, everybody forgets about it. It won't happen, sunshine. Biden can hide his reports, make token gestures of holding shipments of armaments up for a day or two. Let's face it, he hasn't stopped the shipment, has he? Just held it up. Actually changes nothing but delaying the inevitable, it seems, as things stand. And Israel, of course, know that. All in the vain hope he can mitigate electoral damage for himself. 
If Genocide Joe is panicking about re-election, that is because he absolutely deserves to be.